Hi everyone, my name is Joris Peels and this is another edition of 3D Printing News Unpeeled brought to us by 3dprint.com and today we're going to be talking about pickleball balls. So um, there's a company called XL Digital Solutions that got started, uh, founded by two people and they basically looked at one of the big problems with pickleball. So pickleball is a super exploding sport. Uh, there's two of the fastest growing sports in the world are quite surprisingly actually paddle and pickleball all kind of uh, very easy to get started with fun kind of indoor uh, paddle-like, tennis-like games in a smaller form factor so they're easier to do in a city. Uh, and pickleball is growing really quickly. And one of the issues with it is it apparently makes a lot of noise. And this actually leads to centers getting closed or fortunately being able to close or not have uh, as, as, uh, uh, as long opening hours or not being able to have a any course, that kind of thing. And these guys decided to use uh, 3D printing to solve this problem. So they made 20 iterations of a pickleball ball. Uh, they used what looks like to be um, TPU, MGF TPU, but it could be something else. And they developed a DigiPro 3.0 pickleball and a Digi DigiPro 3.1 fast flow, uh, fast play pickleball. And these have officially been approved by USA Pickleball. Now the team says these balls are 10 times quieter than the regular pickleball ball. And uh, that actually might make sense. Now, $30 sounds like a lot of money to pay for a ball. And actually, if you look at the cost of doing this in a TPU thing, they're making a fair bit of money on this. And the regular balls are $3. So this is a bit of a markup as well at the same time. But I like the fact that they made something so quotidian with this. I like the fact that, that maybe making these things quieter could make a lot of sense for a pickleball center because then it can have extended opening hours or open um, without noise complaints to the neighbors, stuff like this. So I thought this was a kind of a fun thing to cover. Uh, and I don't know if this is saying that like, I really believe in athletic gear and making better athletic gear. I don't, I'm not entirely sure if like making better uh, balls is like one of the things that will really make sense given the cost. But uh, I thought it was an interesting thing to, 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 to think about, talk about with you guys at the very least. Uh, the next thing is something from the Department of Energy, or the, namely their Oak Ridge National Labs and the University of Maine. Uh, and their advanced uh, structures and composite center. So the University of Maine has been making a lot of houses, really affordable kind of polymer type housing type structures. And they're now making something called a floor cassette. Now, a floor cassette is kind of an integrated kind of four panel. It's got the structural parts. It's got the insulation in there. And they kind of lift it into a house and pop, pop it in there. And it just saves them a bunch of time, uh, you know, in making that house as, as compared to, um, as compared to them just having to build those things uh, custom made in that house. And what they've done now is they've made these floor cassettes using PLA and using wood flour. So wood flour is like a waste product from, from, uh, 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 from wood processing. And they made these sustainable for floor panels. The idea is that they do all the tasks, the structural tasks, and the insulating tasks that the, they're assigned to do, but they're faster for the construction workers, they're faster for the, the people that uh, make these things, and they're also at the same time kind of like uh, it's much, much uh, more environmentally sustainable. On the one hand, it's PLA, which we know uses a lot of water. It's difficult to recycle, but it is a bio-based material. And this wood flower is something that is, of course, um, uh, something that is, um, you know, a, a leftover material. So this could really save them a lot of time and save them money. So it's an interesting thing. Like we think this is small Im implementations, but if this only does a few small percentage of all the wood floors in America, then of course these, the, the total value of this and the total impact for this on large format 3D printing and 3D printing in general would be immense. So that's one thing. Now, the other thing is, this is actually really interesting. Um, this is a paper printing green malca algae, algae sorry, based materials for 3D printing with light. Uh, this is a research paper by Clara Vasquez Martel, Liliana Florida Martins, Avon Blasco, and a bunch of other people. And they're using microalgae as 3D printing factories, but in a way that maybe you haven't anticipated. Generally, there's a lot of people working on algae and other kind of parts and trying to look at how they could be made to become more factories to, to make things. What these guys have done is they look at these things and say, hey, wait, these algae, they take sustainable materials, they fix COT, CO2, so that's good for us. Um, they, they grow super quickly, sometimes to the detriment of local wildlife stuff, and they produce things like uh, triglycerides, and they produce things like chlorophylls, right? So this is all the problems why you have an algal growth on a you know lake or a sea or something is problematic because you've got this 
colorful material that that blocks off the oxygen for ocean life, blocks out a lot of the light. And they look at this and say, wait a minute, this actually could be a really cheap kind of uh, you know source of material. And what they've done is they've used these and they've taken the materials that come out of them and they functionalize them and they're using them as a 3D printing resin. So photopolymer resin. Now the difference is here is they say they don't have to add, uh, add an extra photo initiator. Now these photo initiators in and of themselves are uh, potentially problematic. Some of them aren't. <coughs> Some of them are less problematic than other ones. Um, it really depends. But in removing the photo initiator and using this uh, kind of the natural materials in the the material is very very exciting so i thought this was like um <clears throat> potentially it's a much safer material and potentially it's uh, biocompatible as well so this is actually a wonderful thing and uh yeah i think this is just something that was a bit unexpected i thought